This is a lab exercise captured on video. The topic of this video is antenna polarization measurement, taken from the lab 5 of Dreamcatcher ME1300 Antenna and Propagation, University Costa. For this video, we are going to measure and plot the pattern of the receiving antenna in horizontal and vertical polarization for the dipole, Yagi Uda, and spiral antennas, which are provided in the training kits. To get the most out of this video, you should view it along with the lab sheet. Please download the lab sheet from this link. You may want to press pause button to read the lab sheet first before proceed with the video streaming. From the chapter 2 of the ME1300 teaching slides and the introduction sections of the lab sheet, we get to know that the polarization of an antenna is the orientation of the electric field of the electromagnetic wave. As is determined by the physical structure of the antenna and by its orientation. Thus, a dipole antenna will have one polarization when mounted horizontally and a different polarization when mounted vertically. In general, a vertically polarized antenna only transmits and receives in vertically polarized fields. If a vertically polarized antenna is trying to communicate with a horizontally polarized antenna, there will be no reception. Polarization is the sum of the x and y components of the E-field over time, perpendicular to the directions of travel. In the most cases, polarization is elliptical, which means the polarizations of the electromagnetic wave varies over time. In linear polarization, the antenna compels the electric field to a particular orientation. The usual cases are horizontal and vertical polarization. In circular polarization, the antenna continuously varies the electric field through all possible values. Circular polarizations, like elliptical ones, are classified as right-hand polarized or left-hand polarized using a thumb in the direction of the propagation rule. In this exercise, we are going to measure the antenna pattern of a dipole antenna using a Dreamcatcher ME1300 training kit and the Adrian N99128 Fieldfork RF analyzer. The ME1300 training kit consists of transmitter module and a receiver module which has motorized rotating pole. The Adrian N99128, when purchased with the right options, can function both as a spectrum analyzer and a network analyzer. In this exercise, it is configured to be a network analyzer with the RF out supplying the RF signal to the transmitting antenna and the RF in measuring from the receiving antenna. We have calibrated the cable loss of the setup using S21 calibrations of the N9912A. For the details of the calibration setup, please refer to the appendix of the lab sheets as mentioned earlier. Two 2.4 GHz dipole antennas are used for the measurement, one as a transmitter and the other as a receiver. Both are positioned for horizontal polarization. For ease of reference, we shall position the receiving antenna broadside to the transmitting antenna. From the dipole antenna pattern plot in lab 3, we know that this position shall give the maximum signal reception. This measurement must be carried out in a far field region. For this antenna, distance of 50 cm between the two antennas is sufficient to put them in the far field. How do you calculate the far field distance? You can look it up in Chapter 4 of the ME1300 teaching slides. Please take note that the main source of error in antenna measurement is due to reflection from nearby objects, for example, walls, ceiling, and ground. To reduce the amount of reflections, the two antennas should be placed as far as possible from any reflecting objects and as close as possible with each other, subject to the far field criteria. On the N99128, press Measurement Setup and select High for the output power. This sets the RF up to 5 dBm. The accompanying software, RedPad, which serves to plot measurement has been pre-configured with this. To set the N99128 to perform S21 measurement at 2.4 GHz. To rotate the receiver antenna at 10 degrees per step. 
to set the polar graph with the 0 dB reference at negative 20 dBm on a scale of 15 dB per division. Now we are ready to start measurement. You can see from pattern, plot at position 0 degree. The signal level received is the highest when both antennas are oriented broadside, facing each other directly. The lowest signal level is recorded when the edge of the receiving antenna is pointing towards the transmitting antenna. Again, the highest signal level is at 180 degree when the two antennas are oriented broadside facing each other. From the graph, you can observe that the highest signal level are at both 0 and 180 degree. And at 180 degree position, the S21 measured is at around negative 31 dB. With the transmitting power from the N9912A at 5 dBm, the receiving signal level is around negative 26 dBm. Now we are going to export the data to a Microsoft Excel worksheet so that we can overlay the cross-polarization graph later. First, save the data into a text file. And after this, open an Excel worksheet and import the data from the text file. Select polar graph to polar graph. What can you expect to see if you change the transmitting antenna to vertical orientation in order to have cross polarization of the dipoles? To mount the antenna in this orientation, we use a right angle SMA adapter. Now we start a measurement with the receiving antenna in vertical polarization from the graph. You can observe that the reception at every rotating angle is very much lower in this cross-polarization mode. To have a detailed view, we normalize the plot. Theoretically, there should be no signal received. However, due to the reflections and imperfections in the antenna, there will always be some minor reception. The data for both polarization of the dipole antenna has been imported into this worksheet and the two graphs has been plotted and overlaid. The blue line shows the radiation pattern of both dipole antennas in horizontal polarization orientation. The red line shows the cross-polarization receptions, transmitting antenna at vertical orientation and receiving antenna at horizontal orientation. It is obvious that the receptions at the two main lobe areas have been greatly reduced due to the cross-polarization effect. From the graph, we can see that receptions at 0 and 180 degree position of the receiving antenna have been greatly reduced in cross-polarization. At the 180 degree position, the S2 one measurement was about 46 dB, thus the reception level was about negative 41 dBm compared to negative 26 dBm when both antennas were in horizontal polarization. So in order to get good receptions, horizontally polarized antennas must be paired together, and likewise with vertically polarized antennas. You may also notice that at the 90 and 270 degree position regions, the cross-polarization reception was higher than the core polarization. This could be due to some reflections of the surrounding objects, which become significant at the two now look regions. Next, we are going to examine another linear polarized antenna, a 2.4 GHz microstrip patch antenna, which has higher dielectric than the dipole antenna. How to determine the polarization of this antenna? The current flow is along the direction of the feed line, so the magnetic vector potential and thus the electric field follows the current. The directions of the E field is as shown. As described earlier, 
this orientation of the microstrip patch antenna as in vertical polarization. The transmitting dipole antenna in this setup is also in vertical polarization. Now that the both antennas are in the same vertical polarization, we shall start the core polarization measurement of the patch antenna. From the radiation pattern shown, the reception is at the highest at a zero degree position when the broad side of the patch antenna is facing the transmitting antenna and at its lowest when the ground plan of the patch antenna is facing the transmitting antenna. Since the patch has higher directivity than the earlier dipole, the front facing lobe is very much larger than the ground plane facing lobe, which is when the ground plane face transmitter. We shall also export the data to a Microsoft Excel worksheet. Next, we shall measure in cross polarization mode, where the transmitting dipole has been oriented in horizontal polarization, whereas the patch antenna remains in vertical polarization. Let us start a cross polarization measurement. You can see at the 0 and 180 degree positions, the receptions were about 10 dB lower than when they were in core polarization. It is important to note that linearly polarized antennas must match, otherwise this would result in a much reduced signal strength reception. In conclusion, horizontally polarized antennas must be paired together and likewise with vertically polarized antennas. We shall plot the two graphs on the worksheet to further examine the results. From the overlaying graph of core and cross polarization plots, we can see that the radiation pattern of the main lobe areas has been reduced by about 10 dB in the reception when it was in cross polarization mode. Again, you will still observe the reflection effect from the surrounding objects at the 90 and 270 degree areas, which is the directions of the two null lobes of the patch antennas. From the completed form measurements, the receiving signal for dipole when in co-polarization mode was about negative 26 dBm, whereas when they are in cross-polarization mode it was negative 41 dBm. That gave the cross-polarization isolation of 15 dB. As for the microstrip antenna, the isolation is 10 dB. From this data, we can say that an antenna with greater value of cross-polarization is preferred as it can significantly discriminate across polarized signal. How can we make good use of this feature? Here's an example. In the same area, transmitter number 1 can use vertical polarization and transmitter number 2 can use horizontal polarization to transmit signals at the same frequency. At the receivers, a vertical polarized antenna will receive a signal from transmitter number 1 and a horizontal polarized antenna would receive a signal from transmitter number 2 without significant interference from each other. The signals from transmitter 1 and 2 will be separated corresponding to the value of the cross-polarization isolation. This exercise would not be completed without examining circular polarization. In circular polarization, electric field of the traveling wave does not change strength but only change the direction in a rotary manner. We shall use two spiral antennas for this exercise. They are the right-hand circular and left-hand circular antennas. How do we identify the antennas? This is my left hand. My thumb is pointing in the direction of the traveling wave, but my fingers are pointing in the same clockwise direction of the PCB traces. So this unit on the left side is the left-hand circular polarized antenna. On the right side, my right thumb is pointing in the direction of the traveling, while my fingers are in the same anti-clockwise direction as the PCB traces. So this unit is the right-hand circular polarized antenna. This is the transmitting antenna which we have identified just now. It is a left-hand circular polarized antenna. You may want to perform the test maneuver using your left hand to confirm this. On your right is the receiving antenna and it is right hand circular polarized with its back facing the transmitting antenna. So this setup is a cross polarization. The transmitting antenna on the left side is the left hand circular antenna 
and the receiving antenna on the right side is a right-hand circular antenna. Let's check on the reception for the setup on the Adrian Fieldfork RF analyzer. The S2.1 measurement is about negative 47 dB. You may notice that the polarization of this antenna is very much depending on the direction it receives or transmits the signal. For example, the receiving antenna on your right side has been oriented with the front facing the transmitting antenna. You may want to check which polarization mode it is for this setup. The transmitting antenna on your left is left-hand polarized, and the receiving antenna on your right is left-hand polarized. So this is a co-polarization setup. The S2 wants as measured by the field for RF analyzer is negative 30 dB compared to negative 47 dB when it is in cross-polarization. We would like to examine what reflections can do to a circular polarized signal. Now we go back to the earlier setup for cross-polarization. The S2 one measurement is negative 47 dB. We have rotated 45 degree for both the transmitting and receiving antennas to face the wall, and we are putting a metal plate to serve as a reflector to reflect the transmitting signal at 45 degree back to the receiving antenna. The S2 one measures about negative 31 dB, which is almost the same good reception level as when both antennas are in the same polarization. From the tabulated data, for line of sight setup for the circular polarization, antennas have to be in the same polarization mode in order to have the highest receptions. The cross polarization loss for this setup is 17 d. We can also observe that the reflected signal from a conductive plate resulted in a reversal of polarization. Thus, the right hand circular spiral antenna can receive signal from a left hand circular polarized signal. The signal level was as good as the earlier co-polarization setup at negative 26 dBm. So this reflection is not causing any reduction or loss of signal for circular polarization signal. On the contrary, it makes the two cross-polarized antennas able to communicate without loss of signal as in cross-polarization mode. Due to the signal propagation properties, Circular polarization antenna technology offers numerous performance advantages over linear polarization technologies. Circular polarization is able to address the challenges associated with mobility and non-line of sight applications. Mobility Mobile devices generally use linear polarized antennas and thus the orientation of the signals depending on how the device is being held. This leads to cross-polarization issue. So a circular polarized transmitting antenna will transmit in all planes, making a mobile device more likely able to establish a reliable signal link regardless of the antenna orientation of the device. Reflectivity Linear polarized antennas transmit in only one plane. So if the reflecting surface does not reflect the signal precisely in the same plane, signal strength will be lost. However, circular polarized antennas transmits in all planes. The signal is transferred to and used in different planes, increasing the likelihood of unusable signal. Absorption. For example, a linear polarized signal will have difficulty penetrating walls containing metal stud. However, a circular polarized signal, because it transmits on all planes, will be able to propagate through the wall to deliver a stable link. Multipath. Multipath signals create an out-of-phase problem. This can result in dead spots, decreased distance, and throughput. Linear polarized antennas are more susceptible to multipath due to increased possibility of refraction, while a circular polarized antenna transmitting on all planes will have a lower likelihood of signal cancellation caused by out-of-phase problem. This is the end of lab 5. To find out more on how you can benefit from this courseware, please visit dreamcatcher.asia slash cw or adrian.com slash find slash teaching solutions.